Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rinku, and this is not okay. They have added the ability to pay for promotions and tasks with pearls. If your worker only takes 11 minutes or less, you only need to pay 10 pearls for them to finish it, and that means every dollar you spend, you could actually create 40 crates, which is just millions of silver, depending on what crates you make. That is outrageous. If you guys agree, please go to Reddit and click specifically this one. This has only been out for 6 hours and 2,700 people have clicked this. This will be the first link in my description. Other than this, patch notes are okay. This is broken. I I just don't like it. If you guys agree, I would highly recommend clicking this up. So at the very like minimum that there's some kind of hope that they see this and actually care about fixing their game. But let's go in the patch notes. And you guys thought the bad news was over. Alright, now there is a lot of cool stuff in this update, but something else I just want to bring to attention. One of the first events on this page is Guild Attendance Reward has been added. That's cool, okay? It, it promotes guilds. However, any adventure in a medium-sized or bigger guild is qualified to receive Guild Attendance Reward. So, any guild that does not have 31 members may fall apart. Like, it's it's really like making any small guild suffer. They're literally giving black stones at the end of the month sharp sh hard shards. The 30th day, I believe, is um, the combat book of experience for 7 days. Like, we can look at all the rewards. I don't really think we have to but it's pretty broken. It's an entirely additional daily login reward for guilds that are only medium or bigger. So I'm just saying this because it really sucks for small guilds. I'm saying this also to you small guilds. If you're small, I would say the AFK like people that don't log in, the, the dead guilds right now are probably going to fall apart, but if you guys still have a small guild and you're looking to get to a medium guild, this will probably be the best opportunity to recruit people because people are going to be looking for guilds for this attendance reward, I guess. So it's going to be a good time and bad time for guilds. It just sucks because why do they need to kill the small guilds? There's no reason why small guilds can't make their rewards too. If someone wants to make his own guild and be the only person in his guild just for the reward, he should be able to, you know? We shouldn't have to be forced to join a gigantic guild. And also, I in fact own two guilds. I have a node war guild and a no requirement guild, and we're just barely at that point. My no requirement guild actually is not there, but I'm pretty sure with this update, enough people are going to want to join a guild that will have 30 people. If you guys don't have a guild and you really just need something to join, you guys can always join my Discord. I have a no requirements, casual life skill, or like work up to a node war guild. Pretty much you join and you can do whatever and you can work your way up to our other guild or any other place you want. And you can get the rewards once we hit 31 members, but yeah, this is really going to suck for those like 15 member guilds that just want to stay at 15. Like, it's kind of like a big fuck you to them. Like, you literally get a combat experience book. That's like, if you're pushing like a high level, that's so important. So, it's just really saddening that they would do that. Now, all that aside, let's get into the actual updates. They take some updates from Korea and well pretty much all the updates from Korea from last week but it's some pretty st hype stuff in our game actually alright now we can get into the good stuff for the updates now there's a lot of events this time there is it says uh, new attendance rewards and then up here the burning attendance rewards so it seems like we have two attendance rewards for like the next month or so this one ends at 9-6 and the regular ones end on 9-20 so I guess a lot of attendance rewards, in addition to the guild attendance rewards, we already talked about that, but if you're in a medium-sized guild, you get a, a reward every single day in the guild for the guild attendance reward as well, all the guild members do. Um, also, they add the gold event, so while you're training, gathering, or fishing, you can get gold items that sell for 5 mil each, I believe. They're also added the Rulipi's World Travel Season 2, I never related Season 1, but uh, yeah, you can do some quests and travel around the world, I guess and possibly get some good rewards, possibly. Um, they also added two more quests, or well, like one quest 
and a fishing event to the Termian Water Park. So the quest has to do with uh, the King Clam. You receive this quest and enjoy the mini game. I wonder what that could be. And also, abnormal an abnormal current has been detected. So there's a lot of new rare fish. And there's also Colcanth, so can you really fish up Colcanth anywhere? This might actually be a time for fishers. So there is actually a lot of cool hype events, you know, there's a ton of reasons to log in. Um, going down here, <laughs> purchase and usage for the filled HQ has been changed. All guilds participating in Conquest Wars. Okay, I'm sorry to bring, bring more bad news. I heard in the, in the like comments somewhere that uh, of this of this thread, of the like, patch notes thread, that you could basically just make a bunch of accounts and like block off everything in the node area <laughs> if you just had enough accounts and guilds because they made it so any guild participating in any in the conquest at all so any guild that like, sets up I guess could just like block a ton of shit I don't know that's that sounds bad I, I don't know like why is this really needed what does this help at all I don't know I'm, I'm not really sure uh, but I don't do conquest wars so I wouldn't know now going down here of course, once again, this is just showing that you can now complete now for any house crafting and also work promotion with pearls. I don't agree. That was in the beginning of the video. Going down here, there's some more updates though. Repair and upgrade for forts, command posts, and barricades during siege wars will now be decreased up to 50% depending on the player's life skill levels. Now, this is very interesting, probably controversial. I'm pretty sure most people in these wars do not give a shit about life skills however i feel like it is a good idea to include the whole game in a siege war because like a siege war is like the end game where like you're trying to like it's not about like pure gear score it's about like power and game mechanics and they just keep adding different mechanics to siege wars that completely make gear score irrelevant this could like make it so life skillers have an edge versus someone that doesn't in this particular like skill i mean of course gear score is still going to be needed in the front line but it's just cool that they're incorporating the whole game into this, but I'm not sure if people actually doing Siege Wars actually want this. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Now, this is more stuff that just came straight from Korea. All of this, the class changes, we literally went over this last week. Uh, just We get a bunch of skills really early on for classes, and it makes it probably easier to get into classes when you first create them. Not too much has changed. Everything, every skill is the same. Just uh, the levels that you get them are different, I guess. All these skills you get pretty much, I think, at the beginning. Automatically learned, yep. And these, I've just been revamped. Um, with Again, I don't know why the Tamer has been increased. <laughs> these the only, she's the only um, class that has her level like increased instead of decreased. So, kind of weird. Class changes, not so much. Um, item changes, we got some cash shop stuff. We'll look in game at those in a second, trust me. We definitely will, but... What's really, really awesome is they actually added the Asula's set into our game. Now, they had this in Korea, and I wasn't sure if we would actually get this right away, but we did, which is really cool. Not only did we get the Media revamp, which we'll be looking at in a second, uh, but we got cool items that drop off the monsters from Media, and this is actually really, really, really good stuff. Let me just put this in perspective. You can get um, 300, over 350 gear score, with Roaring Magical chest piece and all these accessories and duo green items, which is crazy. You don't even need to spend a dime on accessories. You can just wait until you get to Media and just farm these out. They're really good stats. The necklace plus 11 AP plus 3 DP. That's the equivalent to like a try. That's be way better than a try bears, which is what most people try to get to. That's way better than the Jurette's necklace. That's it's just really good. Asula's Crimson Eye Belt. It's 6 AP and 100 weight. It's really good for beginners. It's really good for the 100 weight, honestly. Like, if you just have a trading alt or have something that you need weight on, like a processing alt, honestly, like, this belt is pretty good if it's free than buying, like... I mean, what other belts have 100 weight that are, like, <laughs> less than a few mil? Uh, I'm not really sure, but this is a really good belt. And also, 6 AP, of course, this is going to beat out most belts in the cheaper range anyways. Like, all this stuff kind of beats out the cheaper range accessories. You can go from Jurette's to this pr and pretty much, like, cruise with this on until you make hundreds of mils and you can actually get, like, duo or try accessories. Because this really beats out a lot of the basic affordable accessories because these are literally free. And I'm pretty sure it only takes a few hours of grinding. Some people got this in minutes, some people got um, some in an hour. My guildies already have tons of them and it's only been out for a few hours now. So... That's kind of crazy, 
It's it's just awesome, you know. I can I'm literally going to replace some pieces on my level 60 Dark Knight because I'm bad and bec and I'm at 450 gear score and this is there's still like the necklace is hard to pass up because I don't have a Pry Ogre ring, you know. Like it's kind of I mean I could spend like a ton of money in a necklace, but I could just get this and upgrade something else. It's it's just crazy that these are such good items and the whole thing is that you can't enchant this, which is great, you know. If you want to go end game and push like towards 500 gear score, you will need to replace these with like do or try golden accessories but these are really good on their own and they're free so roaring magical chest piece plus these and they're also going to be adding similar items in the future for weapons and like helmet we talked about that in korea if you guys want to look at that but the asula set they're also making like um armor pieces and weapons so to match your roaring armor chest piece, you will have more in the future. So this is just really good for beginners. I just want to stress that because you can save a ton of money. I highly recommend if you don't have something better than this, get this, save your money, spend your money in, in upgrading your other items. You know, these can carry you a long way and they're probably worth like, I mean, to replace these, it will take mills and mills and mills. So that's why. Now, finally going down here, we get them from the monsters and all these monsters have been completely revamped. Not only... We had Sazen's revamped, it had an AP cap, and it's been proven no matter what, at Sazen, if you have, even with Kudum, with hidden monster damage, you can't do any more damage once you hit 100 AP, even with the hidden monster damage. You can only increase your damage w with species damage, so it's very minimal what you can actually do to increase your damage. All these monsters now have an AP cap, I believe, which is the max on this chart. So, like, Abandoned Iron Mine, any higher than 90 AP, you won't be doing any more, it seems. Now, I believe if you have this much AP, the max, you should be one-shotting, especially with your Awakening skills, because they hit so many times. But it is kind of great that they, they averages it out, and they kind of revamped it. So, I think they have a little bit higher HP, but they give more experience. So... They're, they've been completely revamped. I want to see what you guys think about these training on them before and after. Because I don't really usually go out of my way to train these spots. Uh, but I'm actually going to go for Elrix and get that necklace that seems pretty sick. Um, and try some other stuff. So, even if your character's AP is higher than recommended AP, it does not mean your attacks will be considerably more effective. Which is true. Because apparently they cap off the damage at this AP. So... Very interesting to see. Also, uh, up here, the maximum range of cannons and inferior sailboat and guild galley has been increased. So, hype for those sailors out there. Now, quest changes. I think the only thing here is a new tavern quest added to the Altanova region. Tavern quests, that's cool. Um, very nice, very nice. Now, that is a lot of stuff to take in. A lot of stuff. Let me just make sure I got it all. I knew I forgot something. Now, this is actually pretty huge. I'm pretty hyped. It's pretty nice, you know? A buff movement speed plus two has been added to the outfit, Beginner's Serendian Soldier Suits. Now, this is the free pearl set, the only free pearl set that you get in game without spending pearls. It just goes in the same slot as your pearl sets would go. It goes over your normal armor, and now it gets the set effect or the, the item effect of movement speed plus two, and I just want to point out how important this is. If any of you guys are into min-maxing your stats, most people uh, max attack speed, cast speed, sometimes crit depending on your class. Um, movement speed has actually been proven to increase the time you sheath and unsheath your weapon, as well as the time that you get up off the ground when getting knocked down or stunned. So it is actually plays a huge role in PvP at some times. So, the fact that you can get this for free in game is extremely helpful because the only other way to obtain this movement speed buff is to actually have a pearl set which costs 20 plus dollars then spend another 15 dollars if you can't get it in the marketplace for a tailoring coupon to then melt an item that you get in game which can actually take a while or cost mills of silver and then you also need to spend about five mil for the claw to to carve out the gem slot and then you need to melt the outfit that you made in game that spend you spend mills of silver to get the gem to sock it into your pearl set that you bought after you use the tailoring coupon to, to get the gem you know it's just it's all bullshit okay anyway so the fact that you can get two movement speed on a pearl set in game for free is a huge upgrade and means that you actually don't need to spend money to min max in that way if you if you want to get movement speed if you're if you don't care about movement speed and you're trying to min max crit or attack speed or casting speed you're still fucked i'm sorry i have a video on the black spirit claw if you're into that but that is it let's look at the pearl shop and i think we can call it a day 
So, of course, we can't forget the cash shop updates. So, besides the pay to win stuff, there's actually cute and awesome stuff in this uh, this nice shop here. So, first up, we have the turtle. Then we have Bowser. Then we have an egg. And those are the three, the three magical turtles. So, this was in Korea. Of course, we saw this in Korea, and now we have it. Of course, we also get the striker outfit very cool and also if you guys didn't know korea is got uh this set for every single class now or is getting so we will actually get the same outfit for every class it just came to striker first i, I was actually interested it seemed very unique so i actually thought it was going to be striker only but i do really like it i'm not sure if all the classes have these crazy head markings but yeah this class this set is definitely very sick and it's very sick on the striker in particular Look at those beefy gloves. Oh, shit. I love the fucking gloves with the mouth. We already looked at this in Korea, but holy shit, dude. I Even if I just got the gloves on the set, it looks so fucking nice. Alright. If only I played Striker more. Now, something that I think Korea's had for a while, but looks so beautiful. I just have to say, even though they're irrelevant now because we have a Furious Sailboats, just look at this. Look at the elegance on this. I would love to just go fishing on this. It's just the fact that now I have an Aphirious Selbo, I'll never have a need to. It's just sad. Because I'd really like... I want the same exact set, the same exact, like, thing and everything for the Aphirious Selbo, and I will buy it. Probably. When I get more money. <laughs> probably when I get more money, because I'm poor. Anyways, but I just... It looks really nice, you know? I really do like it. I can't wait to see it in-game. Because the other one, the flying du the purple Flying Dutchman thing, looked disgusting. And, uh, yeah, this, this is pretty hype. So, I guess that's it for the video. There's been good, there's been bad. I love you guys. Tomorrow, we'll look at whatever is new in Korea, which is going to be even way newer than any of the stuff that we get. And other than that, we won't have patch notes next week, but we will have Korean patch notes next week. So we'll have tomorrow's Korean patch notes, next week's Korean patch notes, and then we'll have another uh, regular patch notes because they're still doing it bi-weekly, I believe. So for the... Ending in EU patch notes, I guess I'll see you guys in two weeks, but I have a lot more videos coming out every single day. So, yeah, I love you guys once again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.